Jaya Shri Rabe Siam and welcome back. I just watched the series of three episodes called Krishna's Guru Karma Murders. I have to say that, well, it's nothing really new that the ones who have been doing the homework of studying history and what have been going on on not only Ishkon but in different cult spiritual movements as you want as you wish to to call them we we know that these things are are there and it's the shadow stories of many institutions but this series especially Krishna's touched my heart by a very particular reason and happens that my starting point on bhakti was of course with the books of Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Vedanta Swami and as a child reading teenager early teenager reading his books I feel the inspiration the power of his words the philosophy behind his texts and I thought that a leader like that can really change the world and to make a better world for everyone full of love peace compassion etc and maybe because I was not there I, I, I'm not uh, I cannot say by as a eyewitness that it was like that I haven't been I was not there back in time uh, to see Bhaktivedanta Swami and how he did everything but based on the biographies commentaries of even Vaishnavs who were not with him or not belong to his family from Gaudi Yamaha everybody has mainly good words on Bhaktivedanta Swami and I do believe that I believe that his message is powerful his words his philosophy very very strong beautiful and it uh, give a perspective of a bright future and bright spirituality but the the story repeats itself because we see the same with mainly all the latest gurus who have been traveling around creating some uh, spiritual revolution and previous to Bhaktivedanta Swami was the first Vaishn Gaudiya Vaishnav guru went to America to the United States his name was Bharati Baba Bharati Baba Bharati Baba wrote books on Krishna consciousness grow philosophy explaining what was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his philosophy Gaudiya philosophy etc he did over 500 disciples in his short period of time that he lived in America by order of Sri Radha Raman Charandas Dev he started and paviment the basis for Gaudiya Vaishnavism in Western countries for Western cultures but of course what Bhaktivedanta Swami did was very big as it happened with Bharati Baba. He also had a big complot of the media. Uh, he had people trying to damage what he was doing, his bona fide movement, uh, spreading Gauranga Mahaprabhu and Gaudiya Vaishnavism philosophy. They destroy him, basically. Mm. And how they do? Uh, infiltrating people inside the movements, writing in the media, etc., etc., until they destroy totally. Luckily, the, the fate or the, the fate of uh, Bharati Baba was different because he just left America and went to India to keep his bhajan, his uh, well, duty as a devotee. But uh, with Bhaktivedanta Swami was different because there was a movement much bigger who came in the right time and right place. And previous uh, gurus from different philosophies land in America ready. So it was everything done, ready to start it. And it was successful and he made it great. But of course, what the message of Bhaktivedanta Swami, the message of the Vedas, Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavad um, it's a message that is dangerous for the status quo, for the society, because it breaks the basic structures of the materialistic world. Let's put it like this, because this is what is it. Then, of course, they, they when I say they, I mean that there is some intelligentsia that is behind the governments. They try to destroy any kind of spiritual leader who can really revolve the masses and wake them up. Same happened with the complot against Bharati Baba in the United States. The same happened before, for example, with the Buddha. You know, the Buddha was poisoned. How about Bhaktivedanta Swami? Really, the investigations, if you go through the investigations, you realize that there was something about poisoning. I cannot say that they were 
who did that in case were his own devotees, but infiltrators dress as devotees. Possibly. And getting back to, to the series, is what I see in, in front of this, that people infiltrate the movements in order to destroy them from inside. Because from outside, it's nothing, mar nothing much happening. But from inside is when the things really get rotten. That's why it's very important to keep control of your association with, with who you associate, with who you speak. If you want to progress in life, you must to always be in contact and in connection with, with the ones who are in that platform. And from there to upper, never uh, outside that. For good or bad, this is how the things are. If you are meeting with four people who has flu, you will be the flu patient number five. If you are meeting with four depressive persons who are suffering depression, you will be the fifth depressive person. This is law. This is how things work. So I did some notes uh, while I was watching the three hours. Each episode is one hour. They are interesting. They are very well done. I think as a first documentary I see related to to these topics looks quite professional or professional indeed. I congratulate the ones who are behind this. They make it absolutely great. Uh, I hear one podcast of somebody saying that the documentary is good, but it's showing just one one side of the coin. But I am not feeling that that commentary is uh, accurate because when you are speaking about child abuse on Gurukulas, what is the other side? To ask the pedophiles, to ask what the child did wrong, that you did this to them? Uh, I don't think there no, is no any other side of this coin. When you are speaking about the brutal power and abuse of a so-called guru against people, I don't know if it's there much another side of the coin, to be honest. With exception, if I want to try to think that this so-called Kirtanananda was uh, good. If I would think that, I would say, okay, let's listen to the other part of the story. Everything is very clear and there are so many, many details that I inquire to you all to watch it, at least to know how the, how the things were in some point of time. Particularly, and, and I want to do this uh, a small parenthesis, I am not part of Ishkun. I I know Ishkun. I was uh, studying Ishkun books because of Bhaktivedanta Swami. I study, I think, almost all his works, counting Bhagavatam, translation, Bhagavad Gita, the small uh, pocket books that he wrote, travel to another pla to other planets, etc. O of course, I, I study all this in Spanish language back in time, but I, I, I know the philosophy. I have been in, co in contact with Ishkon uh, in several periods of my life. Uh, since I travel quite a lot, many times there is nothing more where we, you can go to see a deity, Vigraha of Krishna, or Nitai Goura more than Ishkon temple in different countries or cities. So I go there, uh, I have not any, nothing against Bhaktivedanta Swami or his followers, nothing. I really love the Prashad, love the Kirtan, everything is beautiful. But um, I don't belong to Ishkon. Uh, I was part of that early in my 20s before that. I was uh, assisting here and there in Finland that I was living for 18 years. I used to go quite often to ISKCON. So I have nothing to criticize uh, in terms in term of that. When what I normally speak, if I, if I say something that sometimes can be a criticizing something about ISKCON, it's many times about the change on the textbooks, on the philosophy, this kind of things I will speak out loud because I I am a researcher, I am, I am a Vaishnav who is uh, aspirant of Vaishnav, uh, uh, Gaudija who is studying the Shastra also, and I think it's fair to at least to have uh, transparent, clear textbooks who haven't been manipulated and translated in a wrong way in order to understand what our Gauranga Mahaprabhu really thought, what, what he was teaching in his beautiful Gauralila here on earth in, on Bauma. So far from that is nothing more. So m while watching this series, Basically, in the end of the th second episode, I cannot contain myself and some a few tears came out of my eyes because while seeing everything and remembering the words of Bhaktivedanta Swami, it brings to me, to my heart, this, what if these demons will not infiltrate ISKCON or, get, or getting the seats of power 
to decide things inside ISKCON, how all this movement and how this world will be in so little time Bhaktivedanta Swami did such incredible things worldwide. Starting the, 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 the new moda, so many people are getting vegan. Everybody vegan, vegan food, vegan clothes, vegan this, vegan that, vegan, vegan leather shoes. From where this started? Of course, from Bhaktivedanta Swami. The big movement, so thousands of people around the world turning vegetarian is a new market open. And from vegetarianism, some ones took it a little bit more radical and become vegan. I have been vegan in many periods of my time, like completely vegan. Uh, and it's wonderful. And I support veganism. I don't practice 100% veganism because, of course, I am Gaudiya. And when I go to Brindavan, um, when I go to Navadvip or Puridam, food contains milk. And we have our perception on terms of that. But this is a total different story. So he did so many things, so many things that impact the world on a positive scale. So, yeah, very emotional to see all this series, the, the three episodes, one hour each, 55 minutes, and to see how the world will be if none of those gurus or people get involved and if the thing will keep growing in a natural way, you know, on a beautiful way. So I did, I did um, notes while watching the episodes mm, about uh, some topics that I want to highlight about the Siri, but not only the Siri, it's about our own bhakti process. Because what really made me think while watching the Siri was the bhakti process of every single jiva who was involved on those dark moments. But not only that, because recently also, a couple of years ago, many accusations and legal cases about Nityananda, Yogi, some Yogi, or I don't know which name he put himself, but his, his name is Nityananda, and he's uh, running from the justice also with case of uh, charges of uh, child abuse, uh, money laundry, etc., etc. So very similar to what early Ishkong was in some point. So this is happening not only with Indian gurus, but it's happening worldwide with different kind of ins institutions. And the victims of all this are people like you and me, who are looking for a spiritual guidance. And this is a bona fide feeling and which will to have to learn from somebody who is advanced. When you want to study medicine, it's not that you jump to the hospital to open somebody with a knife because you want to be a doctor. No, you must study from the teachers, right? Then after several years of study and practice, you become a doctor and you can do this beautiful profession. The same happened with the spiritual life. You need to learn from somebody who has been walking the path and knows the path. So here is the big problem because many times people forget or just don't have the information about some very basic topics that everybody must to know. And trust me that I learned it in the wrong way, as many of you for sure. But here we are, doing our best. Anyways, uh, from episode 1 to episode 3, there are interviews to gurus, disciples who were there in the early ISKCON. The origin, they, in the first episode, they show the origins of Ishkon was in the middle of the hippie communities, what in somehow also ring a bell because hippie community, we imagine, uh, yeah, party, music, long hair, hippies, flowers, but also there is the dark side of that, those times, that was drugs, alcohol, sex, and all kind of behaviors that will destroy basically your brain. Actions and dr drugs that will basically destroy your brain. So for much, for much that you try to do the things correct, if your brain is not right, then you will end up on the ground, the ground path anyways. It's like if you try to walk with the closed eyes, you know, you have the good will to walk, to start walking correctly, stride, stride forward, but your eyes are not good. So you will fail. So this happened when people has drug abuse and then they become monks. Their brains are damaged, damaged. Sadly to say, but this is true. A drug addict cannot become just a monk and to take the power of a guru or a sannyas, nothing like that. They must to be at least, I think, in my opinion, to study them if they are capable to act as a normal person, normal, 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 as a normal person in order to take such a big responsibility. But here was totally different. Many of them become sannyasis and become like gurus and stuff. So this is very dangerous because in which point of the story of their, of their leadership, something will 
And what happened in that moment? That all the dozens or hundreds or thousands of people following, they will fail as well. And this is what we have been seeing since then. Decades of sad stories, right? So they show their the, the Ishkon origins in the uh, in the hippie communities, the Mantra Rock Festival where uh, Bhaktivedanta Swami was on, on the stage speaking with all the people, everybody in LSD or marijuana or alcohol or whatever was happening there. In that that uh, event and some events that they create on that time, they use the gang members of motorcycle gangs to be the wards of the events. Uh, so do you understand what I mean? It's like you are already doing relationship in one way or another with the grown people. So if one of them feel in the heart and, and feel called to the cult or to the group, to the philosophy, you will have somebody with that mindset anyway. Do you understand? And they show very clear in the second and mainly in the third part of the series they show this and there you see what kind of people are you recruiting for for your movement so and there ap appears uh, some devotees gurus and other uh, hritayananda das bhagavan das kirtanananda das appear some recordings about him um, well mainly is focused on him on his person Chamasundar does appear, um, etc. Appears, of course, George Harrison, the Beatles, that was the big boom for Europe. After them, well, everybody want to be a Hare Krishna, of course. Um, in one moment, one devotee uh, is explaining the Bhagavad Gita is for us, like the Bible for Christians. Uh, it's the main book. But I want to just say one thing. Tell me where Gauranga Mahaprabhu was speaking about Bhagavad Gita, or where the Goswamis of Brindavan are preaching the Bhagavad Gita. Don't take me wrong. Bhagavad Gita is extremely important. I own about eight or nine, actually, after my last trip, nine, eight or nine copies of Bhagavad Gita. Mm. Different translations, yeah, but I have them and I study them and I memorize shlokas as well. It's the word of Krishna, it's the word of, word of Swayam Bhagavan. But Gaudiya Vaishnavas are not focused on Bhagavad Gita, so this is not, with all the respect, not the main book. The main book for Gauranga Mahaprabhu of the main Shastra, the main uh, Pramana for five philosophy, Gaudiya philosophy was Srimad Bhagavatam, no Bhagavad Gita. So here is one important thing, at least to have in mind. Well, while watching the series, this came to my mind. No pure, if a movement has no pure leaders or a pure leader, then this will lead to an impure community. If the leader is not a Mahatma, means a self-realized soul, a perfect soul, then the community will not walk on a straight path, will have problems. If the leaders have some political war with somebody, uh, if the leaders have not uh, tolerance, love to everyone, if the leaders have some dark business for keeping their communities, and you know that, the communities will be doomed. Absolutely. Mm. Why? Because the, the root of the full plant, the full tree, is already contaminated. So everything that will sprout, will grow from there, will be useless and poisonous, very possible. Another thing I see here is that they use, and I have here this, and I want to make a little explanation on this, is that they say Sankirtan, it was a way of collecting money, but the Sankirtan they did was collecting money on very shallow ways telling lies to people uh, and in order to collect money. Like everything is correct if we get the money for our projects. So basically you are founding a structure with money based on lies and no honest way, uh, no, no honest way of making it. So this, is, this cannot lead to anything good for much that it will be some temple or something for for worshiping Krishna, how Krishna will accept something that have been creating with but on bad ways. Let's say I will uh, grow, I will have cows, make them to reproduce and I will sell the cows to the slaughterhouse so they will make meat. They will kill them and we will make meat. But my intention will be that I will take this money to build up a temple. This temple will be a temple of Kali Yuga, of darkness, because the foundation of it is darkness. So you cannot create, create anything. For much that you imagine that Krishna is behind that because we will make for Krishna, no, this is not the way. So this Sankirtan they did selling uh, posters, selling uh, stickers, telling people that they are collecting money 
for the child, uh, for the poor child of Africa and stuff like that in order to collect the money and to create the uh, new Brindavan. Of course, all the money was corrupted, was dark, was uh, full of lies. So what you get? There is, is the example, it's clear, right? So no pure leaders will lead to impure communities. Many devotees get back to their bad habits or smoking or drinking after joining this movement. Why this is happening? Something is strange in the movement, you know? This is a, it's part of a totally different investigation that I, I, I am doing and I'm meditating on this. Why so many devotees who actually full-hearted, they start chanting Mahamantra Hare Krishna and following principles and everything, trying to do everything correct. Why after some time they fell again to the same vicious vice life, like drinking alcohol, using drugs, marijuana, tobacco, eating meat, so on. So it's like they, they didn't learn anything. I think something is grown on the sadhana practice. But, and I am getting there actually, but I will not speak about this on, in this video because it's, it's quite a big topic to, 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 to explain. But something is happening that is making uh, many devotees to fall down again and again and again. And they try again and they again fell down. Something is not there. Some connection is not properly made. Something in the sadhana is not correct that they do not walk forward. It's, lot, it's just lo looks like they lose the enthusiasm and then they fell down where from, or they get back from where they came from. Do you understand? If a bona fide spiritual line, spiritual life is going on, then you will advance and you will not go, go back. Mm -hmm. Yes or not? We have the supreme mantra, the best mantra over all the mantras. The best mantra is the Maha Mantra. That means Maha, the biggest mantra, Maha Mantra, the name of Krishna. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna, Hare Ram. So how is possible that after repeating so many hundred, hundred times, thousands times, nothing happened? So something is not right. Something is happening there. Sadhana, the line, something is disconnected that is not bringing the realizations to the heart of the sadaka. So this is a thing for to study on a personal level or to watch my other videos where I speak about this topic. Now I see the new Brindaban as an archetype as a, some kind of story that is teaching some moral. It's some morality behind the new Brindavan and it's about this. It, it was built up with lies and money made in a dishonest way with this idea that everything is justified if we are doing service to Guru or service to Krishna. This is not true. Krishna will never accept that kind of service. If Krishna is not accepting the service, who is accepting the service? Mm -hmm. Another entity may be accepting the service, but not Krishna. Because Krishna is very clear. In the Bhagavad Gita, he explained, if you offer me a flower, water, a leaf, tulsi leaf, I will accept. What is the food or what is the way of living? How are the ones who are in Satvaguna, Tamaguna, and Rayaguna? Uh, he, Krishna explained everything there. So, New Vrindavan was built up with lies, lying to people, even their so-called karmis, how they like to call them, karmis. It doesn't mean that you have to tell, to lie to them because they are karmis. You must to show your integrity, your spiritual integrity to others. If you will have contact with the karmi, with the shudra, with whatever you imagine that the other pe person is because it doesn't belong to your religion or your cult, you must to show your integrity. If your movement and your philosophy is so superior, show the superiority in the integrity, morality of your actions. So New Brindavan as an archetype was built up with money made in a dissonant ways. The palace is there. The palace is there. But w what happened with it? Was any real spiritual structure there? No. So only a show outside, but nothing inside. Mm. Another important point to meditate today. Many members in the New Vrindavan saw they were aware that devotees and leaders were breaking the basic principles. What are the basic principles? Intoxication, azar games, meat, illicit sex. These are the basic principles, right? Now, if somebody who is not from Ishkon is watching this, some people think that these uh, four principles of Vaishnav life are only for Ishkon or Gaudiya Mat, but this is not true because these are the instructions in the Srimad Bhagavad. Shuma Bhagavatam say that Dharma or the way of living Dharma is like a bull with four legs, right? You can read about that. It's interesting. And there you see there are four legs 
four principles that stand yeah, your spiritual life, dharmic life. So devotees saw that the leaders were breaking the basic principles. For example, illicit sex. Others were consuming alcohol. Others were doing drugs, marijuana or tobacco. Inside or outside the, the, the place, I cannot call it temple, but the place. But they were excusing this with any kind of fantasy. They are not following the philosophy. Uh, we are following. Uh, they say they are proof that my guru of this sannyas or this uh, whatever title you want to give them, they are proofs that they were abusing kids or touching a woman, uh, doing this and that. But I say no, I don't want to see. I am safe. No, nothing will happen to me. I don't. Uh, no, this is a parada. I cannot speak about this. I cannot hear about this. So what they were doing? Mm -hmm. The biggest victims are themselves. When you don't want to see the reality, you will be a victim sooner or later. And if you are not a direct victim, at least your spiritual development is absolutely destroyed by following such leaders. So be aware of this. When the things are not correct, you must to have the bravery in your heart, the power in your heart, and the trust and confidence on Krishna and the eternal Guru Nityananda to say, this path is not working, they are doing the things wrong, and I have to walk. Even if I have, have to walk alone this path, my whole life, I will never accept corruption. I will never accept any of this Kali Yuga, because I don't want to belong to Kali Yuga. I don't belong to the ignorance. I don't belong to this group, to these people. And you must walk, even if it's painful. Fu, tell me how many times I have been crossing this kind of experience. I can write a book, even, even I have been thinking on that. But we must face reality and to move forward, to move forward. There are basic rules that a uh, sannyas must to follow, a uh, guru must to follow. If they are not following, don't start imaginating, no, because we are not so strict, uh, this and that. No, you are being fooled and they are playing with you as a puppet. You must to take your stuff and go. That's it. Then uh, the, the documentary jumped to 1985 when Kirtan Ananda was uh, attacked and he went to hospital in a very bad condition. He came back and he was worse than never, as well the story tells. Followers who knew everything about him, already they knew the accusations, everything, because he was attacked for the accusations. People disappear, etc. Kids were telling that they were abused, but they some people keep following him. So what happened? Because of fear of facing the truth. This is the worst enemy when we are afraid of facing truth. The truth not always will be sweet and rose color. The truth can be very harsh many times, but we must face it and we must move forward if you really want to live this material world, this disgusting reality. This is the truth. Nature, mother nature, the rivers, mountains, everything is beautiful. But what about social and culture? Uh, all these things, I don't want to speak about that, but if you really want to leave this plane and to go to a superior platform where the mind, the heart, on a superior frequency, then you must to really move forward. Otherwise, you are accepting to stay here in this jail, 3D jail. Followers fear of facing the truth, and this makes people to fall in a bigger danger, because finally them themselves will suffer the more, the most. We can see so many cults in the United States, for example, where, where the followers saw that something is wrong, but they didn't took any action on that, and they end up dead or end up in, in the worst scenario. When you see that wrong things are going on, you yourself are the first in danger. With proof of the wrong actions, you should live without telling no one inside. Yeah, because they will try to convince you to change your mind or even if you see something very, very complicated and you have proof that it's true, not only that you are imagining something, no fantasy, but you have proof, then don't tell anyone because you can be in danger. Huh? You just move forward, take your stuff and go. The bottom line is that everything we do in the spiritual path must to be in accordance of the Shastra, in line with the Shastra. That is the real way, that is the way that the Purva Acharyas, such as the Shat Goswami, the Six Goswamis of Brindavan, have been compiling or writing for us. Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu confirmed that Srimad Bhagavatam is the supreme text for us. So you can see in Bhagavatam, they explain clearly what is Kali Yuga, how Kali Yuga people react, act, how are the things. There in Srimad Bhagavatam explain the four principles of life. If they are breaking the principles, then 
event is not happening. You must to just go because this is not real. This is a cult. You must to leave. And one more important thing that actually some time ago I came across something similar. Well, about two years ago, similar. Nothing more but something that already ring the bell. And the note I took here reads, there is no excuse for an adult to be so close and touching embracing and being too close to children. There is no excuse. And parents and the ones who are not parents but are intelligent enough, they must keep a line. Keep a line on that. Uh, you can be guru, whatever, sannyasi or whatever, extraterrestrial, but you will not touch my kid. It's that simple. My kids respect you. You love them. Okay, in distance, do pranam. My kids will give pranam if it's a guru, in distance. But no start embracing them, touching them, speaking close to them. And I saw this two years ago with one important uh, leader. Very close with kids, embracing. The kids give uh, food to the in the mouth of this old man. I say, this is the last time I came. And I did. So after all, when I end up watching this film, I, of course, a, a feeling of sadness behind all this, mainly for the devotees who took pl took birth and, and, and were on that time and space that looks like almost like hell or hell in itself, in the guise of some heavenly spiritual path. I congratulate to everyone to be brave enough to speak out loud this, no feeling ashamed or compromise but this kind of things cannot exist. Of course, this is Kali Yuga, this is the world of darkness. We are in this material world that is half, more than half populated by demons, actually. And by studying Shastra, I realized one interesting thing. The Shastra reads that the demons on Kali Yuga will incarnate as Brahmanas, will take the position of Gurus, they will be in charge of the countries, governments, etc. All this is prescribed already, is described on the Puranas, saying in that, I think at least we must be very careful with our spiritual practice, to who we believe, why we believe somebody. We cannot, or I cannot believe anyone because somebody tell me, oh, he's the guru. Okay, the guru, right? Respect. But I want to see how he's a guru. I want to see his perfection before I open fully my heart or my wallet or I introduce to my family. This is something that we must be very careful. And because the human mind is such that we think that these bad things just yes, happen, but will never happen to me. This is the big mistake. It always can happen to me because I am living in Kali Yuga and the demons are all around trying to get advantage of somebody. And spiritual cults, spiritual groups are a perfect place for them. So be very careful. They are a spirit, bona fide spiritual master? Of course, for sure, yes. By the blessing of Nitai, yes, they are. But may they are not popular. May they don't belong to a big institution. Maybe they don't even have disciples yet. Maybe those very advanced souls that still are around this earth, may they don't ever take a disciple. Well, through this analysis conversation, I hope to give some support to your spiritual path and support to all of them who are, have been crossing hard times, the victims who have been crossing those infernal times. And please remember, your heart, your trust, yourself as a Atman, you are a jewel. And the one who will have the opportunity to be in contact with you and to know you properly is somebody who you will give your trust and your love step by step, drop by drop, just as Krishna is with us. He, drop by drop, is showing himself until one day we will have full darshan of Radha and Krishna. But everything starts drop by drop. You cannot jump to the hands of somebody who you really don't know. For much that your heart and your mind will say, yes, he's my guru, he's this, he's Shiva, he's Krishna, his Chaitanya, his Nityananda, whatever you can imagine, whatever you want to think about, control yourself and step by step walk and give your confidence and your heart to the one who really deserves. They are very little in number. So be careful, be aware, because your spiritual process is right now. If somebody, some demon will come and destroy it, you will have to wait for the next life. It's very difficult to recover from that, but it's possible and we can do it. I hope you have a wonderful day. If you like this video, I humble ask you, like it, leave a comment here on the comment section. I will read and reply for sure. Full support to all of them 
them who were crossing all those bad, bad times and full support to all the devotees who are doing all their best in this spiritual path. Jai Jai Shri Radeshyam, Jai Nitai Jai Go, Jai Jai Shri Radeshyam.